morning. Once again, please, I want a very enthusiastic good morning from you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Right, lovely. Uh, let's come to our next class, continuing talking about design features of natural languages. What is there in natural languages that makes them unique, that makes them such a versatile medium of communication for the entire mankind, for the entire world. And we have already seen some of their features. Uh, you may recall we spoke about features like they are common to all mankind. We say they are species uniform. Every human being has got language. They are common only to mankind. Only human beings have this kind of language. Okay. Can you tell me what other features we spoke about? Human, human languages, these languages have to be learned, acquired, even though we are biologically gifted. Okay. They have to be acquired, they are culturally transmitted. Anything else? Sorry? Yeah, right. All, only human, all human beings have it. Anything else? Yeah, it varies across time, across region. Okay? Right. Let us look at one or two more today and tomorrow, and then we will start talking about the structure of language. And we may begin with, we will begin with sounds. Then we will go on to organization of sounds, organization of words and organization of sentences. Right? Uh, you may take notes if you like, but all of these PPTs and other things are going to be on the, I will mail them to the class representative, I will mail them to Mahesh and they are also going to be on the net later. You also have books which describe these things in great detail. And I will also try and send you links to the websites which talk about some of these things. Please do look them up as well. Right. The feature we will be talking uh, today about is its vocality, you know, that language, it, it, it can, you know, natural languages can be spoken, man made languages in that sense, you may or may not be spoken, but natural languages are designed to be spoken. You know, nature or God has given us the ability, has given us a special organs whose main function is to help us speak. We have, can you put your finger here on your glottis, on your throat? Inside there is a diaphragm, we will talk about it next week in quite some detail. Inside there is a diaphragm, you know, which vibrates as you and I talk. Keep your finger here and say, ah, okay. Now do not say ah, now just say ah. Again please say ah. Do you feel something vibrates here when you say ah? These are special gifts of nature for us. If this diaphragm did not vibrate, my voice will not reach you. If it did not vibrate in your throat when you spoke, your voice would not reach me. God has, nature has given us special ability. Of course, you know, at times, once in a while, you come across people who cannot speak, but these are the aberrations of nature. By and large, 99.99, you know, count as many as you like, except for a very rare exception, all human beings are designed to speak. They have been given tongue, they have been given pharynx, they have been given other organs, we will talk about organs of articulation, 
you know, beginning next week. And we will see that human beings have been specially gifted. They have been designed to speak. No matter who you are, you may be a poet or you may be a quote unquote a fool. Everyone is designed to speak. Okay? Everyone has that natural ability. We actually, you know, the psychology today, the current belief is that we are born talking. You know, parents get terribly worried when the child does not cry after birth. Okay? Doctors get into action, you know, all kinds of worries happen, but when the child cries, that is the first test that its throat, its vocal cords work. The child is able to communicate. Of course, the child cries under the pressure of atmospheric pressure outside. The child's lungs take time to cope with the pressure of air plus other kinds of things which we only inadequately understand even today. We do not know exactly and entirely why a newborn baby cries the way it cries, but it does cry. And that cry is audible because the child, the baby has the apparatus which makes its cry audible. The child, you know, we are designed to, we are born actually uh, you can you, you can think of you know there are Greek philosophers even as in India we have always believed that human beings are born talking it's a later belief you know we will uh, on this course perhaps we may not talk about it but if you are interested you can look up books which get into this debate whether language is learnt or language is naturally acquired. There, 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 there has been a group of psychologists, a group of philosophers, particularly in the last 100, 250, 200 years at the most, who have believed that language is part of nurture, only taught. Okay? But for a for, for long time, you know, we have believed, including in the West, even Greek philosophers have said that our Indian philosophers have also said that actually you might remember the story of Abhimanyu. Does anyone remember the story of a character in Mahabharata? Somebody called Abhimanyu? No? Yes. yes. What is that story? Who can stand up and tell us? Who would not mind being caught by the camera? Please. You may not know the entire story, it does not matter. Do try, it will give you the ability to speak in public. These things are skills. They are acquired only through practice. Who will stand up and speak? Uh, he learned how to Slowly <laughs> and begin again. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Aditya. Yeah, right. Please. Uh, he learned how to go into chakra view uh, in her mother's You mean womb. Avimanyu? Yeah. Uh. Uh, in her mother's womb and uh, while Krishna was narrating the story to uh, her, his mother, Krishna. Please go on, does not matter. Yeah. Right. Okay, you know the Mahabharata has an anecdote which says that Prince Avimanyu learned how to organize a particular formation or how to break that formation even before he was born. It so happened that one night while he was still unborn, while he was still inside his mother's womb, his father happened to be telling the story to his mother. His mother, Avimanyu's mother, do you know her name? Subhadra. Okay. Subhadra asked her husband, Arjuna, how do you get inside a chakra vyuha, a formation which is like a circle? which is a circle with blade, you know, a dancing circle. How do you get inside that kind of formation? And Arjuna seems to have described that in some detail. And inside the mother's womb, the child was hearing. But before the story goes, Arjuna could complete that story 
the mother fell asleep and then Arjuna stopped telling the story. Had Arjuna realized that his son was listening to the story inside, he possibly could have continued, but it is one of those tragedies of mankind which keep happening because they are designed to happen. right? So, you know we have always believed that children learn till you know they begin talking or they begin learning language even before they were born. Some Greek philosophers also say that let me see if the link works. Can one of you are ah, right I finally see this Greek philosopher can anyone please read it aloud somebody else this side please can you stand up and read it aloud okay last bench right please stand up i will now pick up people because you seem to be hesitant in volunteering okay read it aloud because there is born in us the power to persuade each other and to show you see the born in us natural god given please go on persuade each other and to show ourselves what we wish we not only have escaped from living as brutes, but also by coming together we have founded cities and set up laws and invented arts and speech has helped us attain <coughs> practically all of the things we have devised. We shall find that nothing done with intelligence is done without speech. Isocrates in Antigua. Yeah, this is Isocrates. He was, please sit down. Thank you very much. What is your name? Uh, I am Sarthi. Right. Thank you, Karthi. Isocrates was a classmate of Plato and they all believed, Greek philosophers believed just as Indian philosophers believed that God has created, God has given mankind special ability to speak, special ability for language. There is, there is a lot of recent medical evidence as well which suggests that human beings begin learning language even before they are born. If you are interested, there are and you can find some of these books. You can make a note and uh, you know I will send you the link through Mahesh. Okay? You can, this book is available for free download. One of the best books I have read in recent years on the subject called the brain, you know. People, many people today say that we know only as much about brain today as we did about the solar system in the time of Galileo, you know, which means hardly much, hardly enough. We have very limited knowledge of brain. We actually do not know what is the difference between brain and mind. We do not know how brain works. We do not know which part of the brain has language ability or does do all parts of the entire brain is involved in doing anything. There are lots and lots of questions. We know something about the structure of human brain. We know that it has billion plus neurons. We know that it has interconnections, but we do not know how those interconnections act together. You know, we are we have done a lot of work in artificial intelligence, neural network, but we have not even touched the surface of the ocean. I will, I will strongly encourage you to read this book. You see, for you know, we, we somehow we do not have a big culture of reading for pleasure, reading in free hours. But if you cultivate that, you not only acquire good language, you acquire some very precious knowledge, some questions which otherwise do not come to you. Okay? So, when you read a book like this, you will have questions coming to your mind. Who taught me this? How did I get this? When somebody sings and if you have the wrong rhythm, how do you know the rhythm is wrong? Did someone tell you about the raga? Did someone tell you about the melodies? about the cadence. How do you know that this is not the proper raga? This is not the proper rhythm. How does your mind or brain remember even the tune, let alone words, 
let alone voice. Okay, how do you remember that? Is there any connection between grammar of language and the tune of the song? Okay, there are a whole lot of questions and the wonderful thing about this book is it has not been written by linguists. <laughs> okay, it has been written by neurosurgeons, three of them, one Egyptian neurosurgeon doctor and two of his colleagues together. Extremely well written book, anyone who begins reading it cannot keep it aside until you finish it. I will, I will encourage you to buy it, but if you do not have enough money or you do not want to buy, at least read it on the net and you will see. The point that I am coming back to is you know, after selling this book, trying to sell this book to you, I hope some of you will uh, read this book. That you know, there is lot of evidence, people have taken photographs of children born at or the fetus at various ages inside the mother's womb and they have found that neural network starts getting denser and denser as the child progresses 20th week, 24th week, 30th week. A child born after 30th week may be a premature baby, but it is fully formed. If you are interested in some of these areas, please visit the pediatric ward of your hospital, talk to doctors and you will see nature, the wonders of nature. Okay? That it is possible that a child may be born in 7 months. It is possible that a child may be born even in six and a half months, but the child is fully formed and if God willing the child survives, the child grows up to be as normal a human being as anyone you and I know. Okay? So, one feature of language is it is a biological feature, the feature is we have the ability to talk, we have the ability to speak and this ability starts getting formed even before we are born. There is much recent medical evidence that proves this. There is also anthropological evidence. Okay? There are many, many communities which even today have language, but do not have a script. Their language is not a written language. Do you know any, any language of that kind? Anybody? If you actually, you see, once again, just as I told you, we do not have the culture of reading for pleasure. We do not have the culture of, oh, we had, but you know, only old people did that when they traveled, went on pilgrimage. But sometimes, you should find to travel to on exotic places also within the country. India is a vast country. There is nothing in the world which is not there in India. You want permanent snow clad places, go to Ladakh lay higher reaches. You want desert, go to Rajasthan. You want rains every day, go to northeast Shillong. Similarly, you know there are, there is a region in central India, Chotanagpur, you know Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, parts of Bengal, parts of hills in Maharashtra, Andhra, Tamil Nadu, you know, where what we call people, tribal people, you know, it is a misleading name. You and I are also tribals, you know, we all live like tribes, okay? but where quote unquote, what we call scheduled tribes live, you know, Oraos, Mundaris, Santhals, Todas, Nagas. Angamis, you also have some students from those places here. Try and find them, talk to them and you will see that they have as much a language as you and I have. Okay? They also have literature, they also have epics, they also have jokes, they also have vulgar jokes, they also have wonderful jokes, but their languages are not written. Actually, many languages, not just one. I can, you know, I have mentioned only three, you know, I have mentioned even today, Konkani is written in three different scripts. In Goa, it is written in Devanagari or English. In Karnataka, Konkani is written in Kannada script. In Kerala, it is written in Malayalam script. Santhali is written in three or four different scripts. Santhali is written in Devanagari script, Santhali is written in Bengali script, Santhali is written in Roman script, 
and in something else. That does not make Santhali a lesser language. Do you get my point? You know, there are over a thousand languages in the world spoken even today. India itself claims, sorry, there are over 10, you know, India itself claims nearly 1700 languages. Sorry, the world has not just 10,000, uh, sorry, 1000, it has many, many more. I am not sure of the exact, not more than a few hundred of them have their own script. That does not make them any the lesser language. They have all the literature. If you look at Sanskrit, okay, Sanskrit was not a written language until about 2500 years ago, until about the time of Buddha, Ashoka, because the technology of writing itself is a new technology. Okay. If you are interested, look at this book. And, uh, Maybe you can also find, I, I have not checked, but possibly you can find copies on the net as well. This is the history of writing. Okay. We have a copy in the central library. Writing itself is relatively recent. About 3000 years ago, Phoenician traders, traders in the North Africa, West Asia, in that pocket what is called Egypt, Libya, Iraq, Iran, you know, in, in, in that area, uh, some traders invented the art of writing and then technology was invented. Initially, we wrote on hard surfaces, stone slabs, okay. You had hammer and chisel and, you know, you struck the chisel with the hammer and then you wrote your name long time. It took you one hour to write Mahesh, one and a half hours to write Shrish, one and a half hours to write anything else. There were specialists like there are carpenters, like there are, you know, electricians or plumbers today. There were people who wrote, you know, eventually, gradually. Then the paper was found by the Chinese, ink was invented, then writing became more widespread, more people began learning writing. Finally, when printing was invented, sometime in the 15th century, more and more books came. Today with computers, once again, literacy seems to be disappearing. Okay. Not many people write, they only print on computers. But you know, writing is a, is a man-made thing. It is a technology. It is a combination of different kinds of sciences and arts to make it a particular kind of technology. Some people, just as today, everyone, every human being does not know how to type on computers. Do you know anyone who does not know how to type on computers? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Do you know people who do not know how to type on computers? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, I know many people. I come from a village where few people know and they do not live in the village. Those that know how to type on computers live in either Noida or Gurugaon or Bangalore or Chennai or some other places. They are migrated. Okay. So, just as computer literacy today, writing was a specialized skill. Writing was or writing is a specialized skill. Okay? It, it, it requires a technology. It requires hardware and software. You have to have pen, you have to have ink, you have to have paper or you have to have computer. Computer has to have a printer, printer has to have a cartridge. You need paper or you have virtual writing, you need a screen, a, a, a whole lot of artifact. Actually, Literacy is an artificially acquired, you know, I am not saying literacy is not important. I am saying it is acquired, it is artificially acquired. It is, a, it is created by human beings and acquired by human beings in a deliberate manner. It is not acquired by anyone just as spoken languages. 
a spoken language you and I hear and we acquire. Is that so with the written language? You flash a page before the child and the child after flash a page every day before the child and the child learns writing? Yes or no? Everybody please. Are you with me? Yes, Are you in the class? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Do you think if we flashed a page before the child every day, the child will learn writing? No. No, no the child won't because it's a man-made skill. The child will have to first hold the pen, you know. Do you know how many muscles work when you write? It's a particular kind of skill. You will have to hold the pen, the muscle on your forearm, the muscle on your upper arm, some muscles on the, if you are a right-handed person, then some muscles on the right part of your back. If you are a left-handed person, then some muscles on the left hand, left part of your back, then some neural movements in your brain drive the pen before you write A or before you write M or before you write any other letter, okay, plus technology. So, writing is not natural in that sense, quote unquote natural, but speaking is everybody can speak. In all our lives spoken language has come first, written language has come next. Do you know anybody who learnt writing before he or she learnt speaking? Anyone? Even if he or she is in BTEC from IIT or from anywhere, it does not happen. So, we will agree. Do you agree that language is vocal? Please write. The next feature. Language is primarily, mainly vocal. Okay? We are all designed to speak. We are speaking animals. Whatever else you see, writing or typing or chiseling or painting, whatever else we do, our calligraphy, you know, all of this came later. Language is also open ended, please write. What do I mean? I mean that it keeps gaining and losing words, sounds, sentences, features. It is in a constant flux. Both its ends are open. It constantly gains. No matter what you think, there have been movements for purity, you know you must speak only in Hindi, no English word there. Do not call it airport, call it Vimana Pattan, okay? do not call it book, call it Pustak or Kitab. Okay? Whatever man made efforts, language always loses elements, language always gains elements. Uh, sounds, words, kinds of sentences, if you compare your language with your ancestor's language, your grandfather, your great grandfather. Actually, we say that in five generations, it becomes a new language. A great grandson, in other words, my grandson would not understand the language spoken by my grandfather. If they were to be at any place together, I will have to interpret one to the other, you know. It, it, it's open-ended. Why? What, what do we mean by open-ended? It keeps losing and gaining words and sounds. Different classes of words. You know, in English today, you have no distinction of gender. Okay, except in some pronouns, you say he and she. 
sometimes also in adjectives. But there was a time when English had distinction of gender even in articles. There was one kind of the, T H E the for boys, another kind of the for girls. Okay. Today in many languages, in Marathi, in Bengali, I do not know about maybe other language, uh, increasingly in Punjabi and in Hindi, you do not distinguish between plus honor and minus honor. Okay. You just say aap baitho, tum baitho, you do not say aap baithye, tum baithye. We, we do not ask aap kaise hain, aap kaise ho. In Marathi they say kasa ho, in Pangali, in Punjabi, in many other languages. Features keep changing, new features come, old features go away. It is a constant flux and different kinds of words. It is not just that nouns and adjectives change. I will give you examples in a minute. Okay? Also prepositions, also articles, also pronouns keep disappearing. Pronunciation keeps changing, new kinds of pronunciation. When Persian came to this country, some new sounds came, old sounds disappeared. Okay? In our in, in the writing system of in Indian languages, we have three kinds of s, s, we have s, we have s h and we have another kind of s h. Okay? In Devanagari we write s, sh and sh, right. Do you have similar letter in the script of your mother tongue in Telugu? Yes or no, please? Yes, sir. Yeah, but we do not pronounce it. It has either become kha or it has become sh. It is no longer that it used to be. Okay? It is hardly pronounced anywhere except by phoneticians now. So, sounds, words, features, entire lot of things keep changing. They are open ended. Somebody has said that language is like a patient on the table, on, on, on a surgical table. You know, it keeps bleeding, constantly blood going out and it is on transfusion, constantly new blood coming in. If you stop the new blood or if you stop bleeding, the patient will die. So, similarly, you know, a lot of people try engineering, do not let a new word come into do not let foreign word come into that language. Look at what has happened to Sanskrit or classical Latin or classical Greek or classical Persian. They are no longer spoken. They became library language only in books. So, all natural languages are open ended. They take and lose new words. Okay? They lose old words, they gain new words. How does it happen? Why do we gain new words? Why do we lose old words? We do not know exactly. Much that happens in nature is not very well known to us, but we have one or two guesses. One is when technology changes, the way we do things or when culture changes, the way we believe, the way we interact with other human beings whenever there are these changes. So, for example, when there was monarchy, we had one set of vocabulary. We had kings, we had palace, we had princes, we had kings bodyguards, we had generals, we had everything was connected. With. So, we have Raj Kumar, Raj Kumari, Raj Putra, Raj Darwar, Raj Udyan, Raj Marg, you know, the highway, etcetera, etcetera. But today, we have Janapath, people's road. Okay. Today, we have Prajatantra, Pratinidhi, Sabha, Lok Sabha, Rajya Sabha, Vidhan Sabha, Gundo Ki Sabha, Achho Ki Sabha. You know, we have, we have the entire vocabulary changes and those other words start going. Similarly, when technology changes, the way we traveled, the way we cooked, the way we wrote. Okay. Look at some examples. Can you recognize, have you seen 
a cooking facility of this kind? How many people? Raise your hands, please. Okay. Do you remember the word for it in your mother tongue? Please write on your notebook. What is it called in, in your mother tongue? That is in Hindi, we call it chulha. Okay? Right. In, in Telugu, what do you call it? Lovely. And the word for the firewood that you burn here? Malayalam speakers, Tamil speakers, Hindi speakers. You see, in your language, it is already dead. You do not know. There is no Indian language which does not have word for all of these things, okay, which does not have all of uh, the word for all of these things. What is the word for firewood when it becomes ash? Lovely. There is a special word for that. Okay. Look at the next slide. Look at this. Okay. You might see that the vessel, the pot is resting on three or four protruding structures, right? What is their name for them? They have a special name in Telugu as well as in Hindi. In any language, you know, it is the same technology. Do you remember the name? It is dead in your language because the heart, it is hardly in use in, in your families now. You use gas stove or you use electric stove or you use solar stove or actually many families do not cook. They go to Pizza Hut, they go to Domino's, what are the other things? McDonald's or Sarvana Bhavan or Murgan Idli, you know, right. So, you, you know, but everything here has a name. Can you look at the little glass structure which has a flame in the picture? What is it called in your mother tongue? Buddhi. No. Ah, that is right. That is right. Okay. So, you see your child, your grandchild actually, you know, tell him that I asked you this question. God willing, you have 10 grandchildren each, each, you know, I, I do not believe in the boggy of population, in overpopulation. World has enough space for lot more people. Okay? We need people, right? Maybe your grandchild would see it in a museum, but until about or even today when I go to my village, I live in this kind of thing, you know, because we do not have electricity there and electricity is such a, is such a highly ecology destroying, damaging kind of technology, such an eco unfriendly kind of technology. That is another matter. But as technology changes, words change. Can you tell me the name of the pan on which this old lady is cooking, in which this old lady is cooking? Karai. In Telugu? Tamil? Tamil? Malayalam? Anybody who speaks Marathi here? Thank you. Okay. God bless you. Okay. There is no language which does not have word, you know, but now increasingly the word pots and pans and you know are coming, non stick pans, non stick pots are coming in. There is another, you know, flat kind of pan behind that vessel. What is it called? What is it called in Telugu? What is it called in Marathi? Okay. Check with you. I have a feeling that it may have a different, you know, for everything, all the utensils, etc., etc. Do you see there is a water pot with some water there? Chimbu. Uh, what is it called? Chembu. Right. Lota. Okay. All of these, you know, this was an entire technology is changing. You know, another view of the same kitchen, lot of things. What is that earthen pot behind this young lady 
or munda puja okay and it came in it came in different kinds different varieties and the each of these different varieties different sizes had names there was ghara there was surahi there was x there was y a, a whole lot of different things okay many of these things you can please make a note okay find find words for these things in your mother tongue in my mother tongue what is called a stove in english is chula what is firewood is jaran okay what are those protruding structures in my mother tongue they call it gori the pan the deep pan is called lohia the flat pan is called tawa those big ladle small ladle they are karchul cholani uchkan a, a whole lot of thing what is the word for the water that came out of boiled rice kanji without mar or kanji yes you know all of these things can you translate it into english difficult because englishmen don't have that thing can can you translate the word cake into telugu difficult because we do not have that culture we do not have that yeah we do not eat that dish the point i am making ladies and gentlemen the language changes as technology changes i have seen on this campus the days when there was you know computers were limited to three departments electrical computer science and applied mechanics okay then slowly each department's office got one computer and we had to queue up then you know email internet mail came here in the 1990s all mails were received in one lab network lab in the computer science and engineering department in bsb and every department's clerk went there at a designated hour brought the print out distributed like post entire department had only one email id the email id of my department was imgt1 because industrial management was there and those people had colonized us okay but gradually now you know everyone routinely says what is your email id okay send it on the mail mail the word mail has meaning has changed it doesn't mean a railway train it does not mean postal service okay so things change they also change when culture changes look at some modern kitchen new words what is that flat hanging thing called what is this thing called what is this called is the lid of the cooker it's the lid of the cooker what is this thing called tap what is this thing called where does it go to come on it go to the geyser you see or water dispenser okay water dispenser lots of you know entire kitchen has changed compare this kitchen please compare this kitchen with this kitchen except that human beings are the same everything else has changed that kitchen the new kitchen is energy intensive for everything you need electricity or some other form of you know energy whereas for this other thing it is so far far simpler of course you know you can say the cooking today is better i think the best cooking happened in some of these kitchens okay but the entire technology has changed the vessels have changed the utensils have changed the tools have changed look at these kitchens okay the way we traveled what is the word for the bullock cart driver in your mother tongue what is the word what is the word for elephant driver in your mother tongue what is the word for horse driver in your mother tongue a horse minder those who speak hindi please raise your hands those who speak hindi what is the word for the person who looks after the horse sais i'm sure telugu has them i'm sure tamil malayalam all of us you know but because this is change every part of this contraption has a word 
what is the name for the rope which crosses through the nose of the bullock? What a cruel way. Their nose had to be pierced for the rope to be put through. What is it called? That rope. Next time you go home, please find in Hindi it is called Nath. Okay? What is this rope called? The rope with which the, the bullock car driver controlled the boat. Everything. What is this wooden structure called? What is this wooden structure called? It is in Hindi it is called Jua. Yoke. Y O K E. Yoke. All of these things, you know, today we travel by train and Indian railway trains are as crowded as this. This is a train from out of my village. Everyone trying to go to Delhi or to Bombay, to Calcutta, to Madras, village is getting, des village is getting deserted. And you know, we have an entire, in all our languages, we have now words like train, express, reservation, late, railway station, 500 words from the technology of railway trains alone, railway line, crossing, tracks, X, Y, a whole lot of things. You can make an entire list of things where we have got words from. Language is arbitrary. Can I have you for another three minutes? Okay. Language is arbitrary. The meaning and meaning and word have no connection. You can have any word meaning anything. Okay. The word I have taken some examples here. The first line, you know, chuma, C H U M A. In Tamil, it is an adverb. In uh, Hindi, it is a verb. In Hindi, it means kiss. Okay? Mothers kiss their babies. But in Tamil, it is an adverb. Why are you doing it, chuma? For no particular reason. Okay? Or BB. In Urdu, it can mean wife. In Punjabi, it can mean mother. Or dai, it can mean in my mother tongue, it can mean aunt. But in Hindi, it is a maid servant. Okay? I in Marathi is mother, but in Hindi it is past tense of come for a girl, a ladki I. Okay? Or bai, in, in the Hindi is spoken in Bihar and Uttar Pradesh it can mean a dancing girl, a dancing woman. But in uh, Madhya Pradesh, in Chhattisgarh, in Rajasthan, it can mean a mother, a grandmother or a respectable woman. So, you know, words and meaning, pronunciation and meaning do not seem to, I do not know if it is true, do not seem to have a logical connection. It is arbitrary. Language is anything can be made to mean anything can be made to mean anything. You, I'm sure you are aware of them in the hostile language. Okay, some people say words with G L mean good things. So you have glad, glamour, gleam, but glisten, but and glow, but you also have things like gloom, which means sadness. See, it is not necessarily true. Words can have one meaning one day, another meaning another day. Madam used to be a respectable lady. In some slang, madam today means the head of a brothel, the woman who runs a prostitution den. Gay earlier was the description of a BTEC boy, handsome, rich, intelligent, assured of a job. Today, gay means someone who has a particular kind of sexual preference. Okay? Similarly, with silly, thrill, earlier woman was known as wife man in old English. Today, she is woman. You know? So, meaning and pronunciation and words do not have a logical connection. We will meet tomorrow again and continue this discussion. Thank you. Thank have a good day. Thank you. Yeah.